Hi friends! Today I have a special series that I'm starting for you guys. It's Enamel Pins 101. I get asked uh, almost every day um, for tips and advice for how to get started in making enamel pins. I've been making them for over a year and a half. Um, I have, I've made all of these, which is just bonkers to think about. These are, these are my dudes um, that you can find at thepinksamurai.com. Um, and um, I have learned a lot in the last year and a half. I've worked with um, an amazing middlewoman. I've worked with factories directly, and I have learned a lot about the world of enamel pins. And since I get asked so much how to start, I, I feel really bad that I just don't have time to write back to everyone. And so I figured I would make a series on YouTube just for you guys um, for just kind of my tips and tricks and basic knowledge on um, how to start making enamel pins. So today I will be talking about the anatomy of a pin. So basically just the terminology around the different types of pins that there are. So let's get started. Okay, so the first type of pin we're going to talk about is soft enamel. So this is what a soft enamel pin looks like. So you can see that the metal is raised and the enamel sits inside. So basically they cast your mold and then they have little machines that fill all the little spaces with enamel. Let me see, focus. Yeah, so this was actually my very first pin design. Um, I came out with it over a year and a half ago, and it's still one of my favorites. Um, and yeah, so this is, it's the least expensive kind. Um, a lot of people will love them. They only make soft enamel. Um, I feel like a lot of pop culture pins are soft enamel because you can get a lot of detail in faces a lot better than some of the others because the lines can be so thin. Like, I don't know if you can tell on camera, but that little kitten that's getting abducted like has a little face and a pouch and um, you can see all of it. So um, soft enamel is really great for a lot of detail and it's the least expensive. So it's a really great kind of place to start if you're getting, um, if you're getting into pins. One thing I will note is that sometimes the enamel does chip. So be gentle with your pins. We love our pins. Yeah, we want to be sweet to them. Um, but I think a lot of times I just notice the chipping because it happens in the process when I um, am packaging them. So probably my fault, but something to consider. <laughs> Another thing um, to think about is using glitter in soft enamel because sometimes you can get a little fallout with it. So you'll want to do um, what's called epoxy on top and I'll talk more uh, in detail about that in just a minute. Okay, the second type of pin I want to talk about is a hard enamel pin. So that is like this one. If it'll focus, there we go. So with hard enamel pins, uh, to my understanding, they cast your pin um, in the metal finish and then they put the enamel in and then they sand it down so it's all smooth surface. You can see there are no... Um, no indentations there, it's all one soft thing. And this is really great for like whiter, uh, fatter line quality, stuff like that. Um, it's my favorite, it's, it's just my favorite to work in. That's what all of my pens are now. Um, the only soft enamel I have is that first one that I did. Um, but I love fatter lines that you can get a little bit of detail but because of the process where they sand it down all together it just kind of fattens them up a little bit so I would suggest if you want a hard enamel pin with a lot of detail to size up just to make sure that you get um, all the detail that you want in it. Um, hard enamel is a little more sturdy um, and I just think it looks a little bit cleaner, but I mean, that's just me. Everyone has their own preference and some people love doing soft enamel and that's awesome. I have plenty of soft enamel pins um, over here too. So there's, uh, there's no right or wrong one to pick. It's all personal preference, but that is hard enamel. Mm -hmm. 
and hard enamel is a little bit more expensive than soft um, just because there's a little extra bit um, to the process of it all. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind. Uh, the third type I want to talk about is cloisonne, which is jewelry grade. So this pin is by Tuesday Basson, who is amazing, and I love everything she does. But um, you can tell that the cloisonne is um, shinier. It's like hard enamel, the same kind of process. It's all um, smooth all one kind of surface uh, there but you can see how shiny it is and it's so pretty and uh, I'm actually going to start looking into some cloisonne stuff uh, for my own work soon but you can just see oh my gosh I can't stop putting the shine on there it's so pretty oh yeah so cloisonne more expensive uh, also gorgeous so um, I actually just got this in the mail today and I love it oh so pretty um, it definitely has me wanting. I think they buff it after. I think um, there's just a little bit extra work that goes into it, but I'm not sure. Uh, pretty sure I should probably research this a little bit more, but cloisonne is nicer, jewelry grade, um, and a little bit more expensive to make. So, cloisonne. So now I want to talk about just some extra stuff that you can have added to your pins. Uh, that's really fun. I mentioned getting epoxy on top of glitter for soft enamel, so I wanted to show you what that looked like. So I've got, oh, let me put this one down. So this is my very first catacorn pin, and this is a soft enamel with glitter and epoxy. So you can see that the epoxy is just a layer of epoxy resin that they put on top of a soft enamel pen. So it makes it all smooth um, and it helps to keep the glitter in. And um, I think these turned out great. The only thing with epoxy um, that I have found is that kind of in the process of you know, making the soft enamel pin and then putting the epoxy on, dust can get in, which is really problematic with like white, like this catacorn. So I had a pretty high rate of seconds or flawed pins that I just didn't feel comfortable selling at full price. So that is something, it's something to consider with all glitter really, just because of the, um, the extra step that goes into it. Um, but yeah, that was, uh, wasn't a huge fan of, uh, of the seconds rate and the epoxy um, on top of that because I mean I like white pins too so it's so easy to see when a speck of dust or a little smudge was in there but just for reference that's what that looked like and in comparison I switched later on and I did hard enamel so I sized up to make sure that I had the right detail and this is a hard enamel glitter pen so they add the glitter into the hard enamel uh, when they make it so again all flat uh, you don't have to worry about any kind of fallout and um, I really like how this one turned out too a lot of factories won't do uh, multiple colors of glitter because of the high seconds rate glitter can just be kind of problematic for everybody I think um, but some do some don't and it's something um, that's worth talking to your um, Whatever your contact is. And then the last little thing, I'm going to pull one off the board here. Oh. This one is by the amazing Lindsay of Emmett Sprout. I can get a hold of it here. <laughs> so this has screen print on it. So with most pins, you need um, metal around all of the colors because the color needs. A place to sit you know but this one you can tell the details here in the stars and then in the front there and in the cat too yeah the little ears and the cheeks those are all screen printed like just like you would screen print a shirt so they screen print on the pen so there are no uh, metal lines around it so if you didn't want to outline absolutely everything that's the way to go so uh, it is worth noting that glitter, epoxy, and screen printing are all added costs onto the type of pin that you want to make. So there's that. <laughs> Let me put this back. Do you do? I thought I had that on there. 
it goes like that now. Okay, so now moving on to the back of the pen. So you can have one post, which is awesome for, um, you know, an inch. Um, you can have two posts, which I generally like to have for anything that's an inch and a half or bigger. Um, and another thing to think about, usually whoever you're working with is going to be able to tell you how many posts you should have. So that's not really a huge consideration unless you really want to make sure you have the two posts. Um, and another big thing that I always, always, always do is have my logo added to the back. It's called a back imprint. So if you can see here, I've got my business name on the bottom. You can kind of tell there. So this way, if your customer just forgets where they got it, if they give it to a friend, if they throw away their backing card, if, you know, for whatever reason they don't know where the pen came from, they can flip it over and then they can Google you because that is so important. I've been in business for a long, long time and I never really had a way or I was too cheap to figure out a way to add my branding to stuff like that. And um, it's, I just think it's so important to have your logo on the back. Um, just so people know. I know that I've looked. I mean, I have a ton. I know I can probably tell you everyone on here, but there are definitely a couple I'd have to think about and then I flip it over on the back and, and see who it is. So um, definitely important. I think it's worth the extra expense to get a back imprint. Um, the cost of it can vary. I have one place that charges just 25 bucks flat um, with your mold fee uh, for a back imprint, and I think it's absolutely worth it. So, um, however much they charge, unless it's like ridiculous, just just do it. <laughs> That's my advice. Okay, now the last thing to talk about uh, when you talk about the anatomy of a pin is the backing clutch. So we've got ooh, clutches everywhere. We've got a butterfly clutch, which is standard. These are literally the worst. They bend, they fall off, you'll lose your pins. I hate them. They're garbage. Don't get these. Don't do it. They're the cheapest ones, Don't, but don't do it. They're awful. Like, like they don't even hold the shape of the pin. Like, sometimes I've gotten pins in the mail and the like the whole post is crooked and mooched because these are so soft and the worst. Don't do it. I hate them. Um, then you've got rubber clutches, which are my standard go-to. Um, probably help to see it on a pin. Pin clutch. Or I know it's again groundbreaking stuff here, but. Um, these hold so much better and uh, they can hold tighter to a fabric so they can just kind of stick a little better uh, to what you're doing so they don't like flop around um, and you can get them in fun colors I've got a I've been super into getting pink ones lately because duh pink samurai and then I've got some folks use yellow purple you can get lots of fun colors just ask whoever makes your pins um, what colors they have available and a lot of people I don't have any examples right here because I think they're like on actual clothes right now um, but some people have been getting heart shapes and you can get custom shapes made and that's a whole different um, a whole different thing to get into but a lot of people offer those and they're really cute um, and and yeah the only other one um, the only other kind of uh, backing that I know about is a locking uh, back and I don't have any of those mostly because I'm afraid I'm gonna <laughs> not be able to get them off uh, but the locking backs are metal and they really stick like they uh, eh, 
I can get this clutch off to show you. Like they kind of stick on and latch basically. Um, I think I don't have them, but um, I know you can look up uh, videos about that too. But locking backs are another um, alternative if you, a lot of people use them as add-ons so you can offer them in your shop and someone can get them for like a dollar uh, added onto their, uh, added onto their purchase. So um, that's another option um, to think about. I've never uh, really had the case. I think only a couple of folks have mentioned their pins falling off, but I think most everybody knows that like that's not the seller's fault. If your pin falls off your bag, like I would never, you know, contact someone months later saying, mm, pin fell off my bag. It's your fault. Give me another one. So we talked about soft enamel pins, hard enamel pins, cloisonne pins, adding epoxy. We talked about screen printing. We talked about glitter. We talked about backing posts and imprints and clutches, everything that makes up what a pin actually is. So I hope this was helpful. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions at all in the comments below. And um, please, uh, stay tuned for more videos in the series. Um, I'll be talking about file types and more technical stuff in the next one. What else do I have? Um, I'm going to be talking about production, um, things like that, working with a, a middle woman or a middleman, um, working with a factory, things like that. And I will also be talking about um, packaging and uh, possibly launching if that's something you guys want to hear about. So if you have any other questions about pins that you want me to address in more videos, please let me know. Um, let me know in the comments for sure. And uh, if you like this video, if it was helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. I've got more fun videos coming for you soon. Thanks guys. Bye.